Uh, before we go to the phones, which we're going to do right now, but this take 13 seconds, Kyle Shanahan uh, was asked about already being down to a third running back because, of course, Eli Mitchell, now I think this is a little bit of a disingenuous sort of an approach. I think Jordan Mason was going to beat out Eli Mitchell anyway. I thought that all camp. But, okay, you're down to a third running back already. Here's Kyle's response. It's different to be down to your third guy already. I never really looked at Elijah or JP as two or threes. I think those guys are capable of being ones, as Elijah's shown in the past, and um, so is JP. For those the two new guys, and when their op comes, I believe they're ready. Okay, so he views JP as a one, so they're not down to their third running back. They've got three ones. <laughs> right, now they got a couple of twos as well, and yeah. they should probably go out and add a three and I was mentioning Keyshawn Vaughn on the practice squad. He might be a guy who gets elevated. So stay tuned. Kyle Shanahan, like his father before him, they've done a lot of magical things on the ground with people you've never heard of. Uh, always have. Right. Always, always have. And if you've been an NFL fan for a minute, you'll remember those names from Mike Anderson to Orlandis Gary yep. to, and then the ones that actually had some name value, Terrell Davis and and uh, Clinton Portis and whatever. But it's just like it doesn't matter who's back there. So it seemed. Uh, and the Niners have that too. Mostert, Breida, on and on. Okay. 888-957-9570. Christian McCaffrey is out for week two. The 49ers are considering an IR stint, which, which would push him through at least week five. Uh, let's go to uh, Let's go to Jay. Hey, Jay, thanks for calling. What's up? Hey, I guess your uh, your guy didn't tell you. I'm I, uh, so I want to put it out in ninety five point seven community. I'm trying to drill through a leaf spring. Do I go carbide or titanium for a drill bit? You so, got to go titanium. I I don't think that the carbide is going to give you clean enough cut. You know, you need the the heat that comes with the titanium. Much cleaner cleaner trip through, if I can recall. I'm I'm going to answer this in a very fuddy duddy way. Jay, our producers, and he's got a name. His name's Lucas. He's the director of sports at ninety five seven. The game. He absolutely, absolutely made us aware that you're trying to drill a hole in metal. And while Christian McCaffrey is facing IR, I'll straight admit I didn't give a rip. So Jay, Jeez. sorry for being wow. a fu- I'm so sorry for being a fuddy duddy. I really don't care what you do here with your metal, but with, but 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 I'm glad you called. I'm taking Dib's advice. Then. All right, good. Yeah. You uh, should. Thank you. I, I don't know the answer anyway. Oh yeah, it's clear. <laughs> so the thing is this, man. RBs don't last, and NFL teams know this, and. Uh, Man, rest CMC. Just rest him. Just freaking rest him. And and let Kyle do what Kyle does. All right? So you got an entire season, right? All right? So there's a lar- large, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, sample size. You have a large sample size for the season. And, yes, did he make mistakes? Sure, in that final moment the last quarter, but just trust in Kyle, people. Just trust in Kyle, and I'm sorry, Diz, what'd you say? Titanium. Titanium? Titanium, Jay, yeah. Go tar- titanium. All right, I'm Appreciate on it. it. Yep. Or, right. t- or tartanium, or tarkanian. Best Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Use the tarkanian yeah. blade. Yeah, eat a towel, and it'll be fine. Best of luck, and he's right about RBs. They tend to not last, and because of that, if you can have a more fresh McCaffrey in week, whatever, 10 or 12. I don't even know if that exists. Clearly right now in week two, he's not ready to go. And that doesn't have to be a devastating thing. No, you're, you're all absolutely right. I just, this is, I have the hardest time processing this point though, because here's where my head goes. In fact, even the number one, the most recent set of texts on the Xfinity uh, mobile text line, 510, thank you. Put him on IR. So he's ready to go in the back half of the season when it counts. You know exactly what I'm going to say. How the hell you know he's going to be ready then? Yeah. He's been hurt since January. January. Right. So right. why do we suddenly think, oh, just put him away till week six, and then the Chiefs come to town, and they'll be ready to ride? Maybe. Maybe. I'm preparing my mind. For Christian to not play this year. I'm not telling you I think that. I'm not telling you that it's going to go that way. 
But if Christian is ready to rock in the way that we know Christian is ready to rock, I'll be pleasantly surprised, and that will be wonderful. Yes. But, like, dude, if this has been lingering since January, on what planet are we all thinking, well, just give him a few more weeks. Like, they've given him a bunch of weeks. Yeah. He ain't ready. I don't know if he's going to play this year. I got no idea. And I'll tell you this, having coached at a much lower level and dealt with athlete injuries, when you have an injury that – could be severe, you immediately shift your mindset into what do we do without this player? You want the player back. They want him ready for week three. And if he goes on IR, you're hoping he's ready for week six. And if he's not ready till week 10 or 14, you're going to be ready at that point. Between now and then, you've got to rush the ball. You've got to find a way to get yards on the ground and win football games. So I'm sure Kyle already is sympathetic to Christian's plight right now. But he's already moved on to wow. what do we do in game plan no, wise without no, him? No doubt. And here's where when people go Super Bowl or bust or it's a year to year league, here's where I do think you have to bring the future into play. Not just because of the contractual situation, but are you a human being? Like Christian McCaffrey, if doctors are telling you, yeah, he could play week nine, he's at a much higher risk to rupture the thing. Well, now now you're bringing next year, and you're bringing, quite frankly, in his late 20s at that position, you're bringing his entire career into the balance. And so I do think that's a conversation that could end up happening where you do get to week eight or week nine or week 10, and you're like, this is just not worth the risk. Let's, like, we'll see you next year. Like, that's, that's possible. That's yeah. possible because you can't, even to win a Super Bowl, if you feel like this guy's at a high level risk of rupturing his Achilles, I mean, and I know what Christian will say. Come on, coach, put me out there. It'll be fine. But similar to the conversation a lot of people are having today about Tua, you got to get other opinions entered into this whole conversation and sometimes help these players save them from themselves. No doubt. And we obviously are not aware of just how severe the Achilles strain or the Achilles tendonitis is and we've heard many doctors and Dr. Narav Pandya joined us earlier today and Dr. Brian Feely earlier in the week and based on the severity that will indicate how much more likely it is that a rupture occurs so not knowing how severe it is we don't know that because if he was on the precipice of a rupture he probably would have had surgery in March and just bagged the year and got it good and sat a year and thought, you know what, I'll just come back in 9 to 12 months and make it better. But if it's a 50-50 thing where maybe rest will quiet it down and you'll be able to play, right. that becomes a more difficult thing. When I tore my ACL, I went to the doctor and they're like, you have no ACL. You need one, so we're going to go ahead and put one in from a cadaver. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't a really difficult choice to make. Right. But this is a tough call to make. Absolutely. Absolutely. By the way, um, our friend Tim Kawakami um, sent this out about an hour ago, and I think it's a fair thing to enter at least informationally into the conversation. So many people now talking about the possibility of IR, which would make him eligible to come back week six against Seattle. As you pointed out, short week. And, oh, by the way, what surface do they play on? Same thing that we're talking about in Minnesota and L.A. That's another turf game. And it is a very short week. So if he's not going to be ready by Sunday against the Cardinals in week five, you may well be thinking, ah, let's not do week six in Seattle either. That's four days later and it's on turf. So maybe right now the Niners are actually circling the week after that, which correct me if I'm wrong, that's the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, and they go after that game, they go grass, grass, uh, grass, okay. turf, grass. That's their next five, and okay. including a bye. The only turf game is uh, at Seattle. No, they have Seattle at home, so Seattle's those are all at grass. Home. All Tampa's all... grass. Is What is Buffalo? Buffalo is turf. Okay, so there's your next turf game after Seattle right. is in December. It's in December because they will go home, home, Tampa, home, Green Bay, yep. and a bye week in there too. Exactly, and the Buffalo game, I believe, is your final turf game of the year until you, you play correct. until you play Arizona. Arizona on on January fifth, which hopefully the Niners have uh, wrapped up the first round bye by then, yeah. because of uh, as we've learned, they will not be losing any games this year, 
And so uh, he can rest for that one too. Yeah, and I the reason why I, I still think that they are a Super Bowl team, and honestly, I think five and zero after five games is where they should be. I just look back at the 2019 year. Niners go 13 and three, and here are the carries: Tevin Coleman 137, Raheem Mostert 137. Matt Breida, 123. Wow, that's crazy. Those were your three running that's backs. That's crazy. And they all rushed for four to five and a half yards a yeah, tote. But this is a different team. I it mean, is. when you acquire Christian, you're you're committing to more of a bell cow scenario. But you can go from committing to committee if you have to. See what I did there? And this was much more of a committee. And if it's Mason and Garendo and... I don't know, whoever else you can find. Right, maybe Breedy right. comes maybe back. Maybe yeah. you can do it that way. Uh, let's go to Waterman in Corte Madera. Hey, Waterman, what's going on? You're on with Willard and Dibs. Afternoon, gentlemen. Thank you for taking the call. Yeah, man. Um, so I've got, two, I've got two things. Obviously, this is not the news any Niner fan wants to hear. Um, and so I'm going to slightly contradict myself. My first thought is, if you're thinking IR, put him on IR right now. Why are we thinking about it? And let's not let him play till after the bye week. Forget the Chiefs game. He's more important than just one game during the regular season. But then the other flip is what you kind of stole some of my thunder there, Willard, is what is six weeks going to do when, when six, months hasn't done, six months hasn't done? So, that I mean, I don't know where you go with this. Now, I guess it could be a week-by-week thing. But, I mean, that leaves everybody like, well, is it this week or is it? did it flare up again? And then we're doing this back and forth thing. And, that, I mean, that's screwing with Kyle where you just, just shelf him. Just shelf the guy and, like, not, like, move on from him, obviously, but just move on with the game plan and just know you won't have him for this duration. Well, Waterman, here, so, here's, what I, here's what I would say, because it's a fair point that many might be thinking, but this, and I'm going to just try to translate Kyle Shanahan the best that I can Dibs, I think you'll back me on this. Waterman, thank you for the call. He's saying if you're considering IR, just do it. My translation is that's what they're trying to tell you. The reason you don't just come out and do it on Friday at 2 o'clock is because the pain came yesterday that was worse. You go through the morning process at the facility. You're talking with team doctors. You've got to still conduct practice. You've got to put together an injury report for the game. It's a lot going on. It's a busy day. And then once that's all happened, now you're going to huddle as a group. In other words, there's no difference between putting them on IR today or putting them on IR tonight or putting them on IR tomorrow morning or Sunday morning. There's no difference in that. So this is simply the 49ers not rushing to a microphone to tell us what's happening. But if they set it into a microphone, that is what they're doing. The, I, that's what I believe. I believe that Christian McCaffrey will be on IR by Sunday morning. I think that he'll be on IR by tomorrow morning. Yeah. And I, I do think that the announcement comes out today because they realize there's no sense in even flying McCaffrey there for a let's see if you're ready Sunday morning kind of a vibe. He got through yesterday. He comes in today. Practice was at 1230 today. By the time he came in today, the pain was so severe that you knew – he was going to be out on Sunday. So now you go through practice, 1230. They probably wrapped it up a little while ago. And, you know, Kyle Shanahan already spoke at 130 when it was over. And now you you sit down with the GM and you sit down with your, your player personnel people and you look at your options. And maybe it is you call Matt Breida back and see if he's able to, to rejoin the team or you elevate Keyshawn Vaughn off the practice squad or you look at all your options and you figure out if he's going to go on the IR What's the corresponding move you make? Yeah. Or maybe you just play this out for another week and you try to get him ready for uh, week three. Uh, uh, or, well, we'll see about that. I don't I, think look, that that's likely. Option A, I mean, again, I like. I think Christian is very likely going to end up on IR this weekend. And then it just becomes, dude, you're over here and the doctors are going to let us know when you're ready to go. And if that's week six, great. Seven, eight, great. Not at all. Okay. But until you're back... Option A is exactly what you saw on Monday. I have absolutely no hesitation about the idea of, dude, let Jordan Mason run for 1,400 yards this year. He can do it in this offense. And I don't sound crazy because I can give you a list of, of you've never heard of them who do that under Shanahan. 
Mike or Kyle. That's what they do. This is a very, very effective system. And we can line up offensive linemen to come on the air right now. Mark Schlereth will do it with us next Tuesday, I promise. And he'll tell you exactly why this run scheme is so effective. And if you've got Trent Williams on the left and Pooney doing what he's doing now at right guard, and you're able to pick sides the way they are, like, yeah, yes. Mason can lead the league in rushing if he's healthy for 17 games and gets that opportunity. No doubt in my mind. Or you can have some sort of a committee, and I referred to you yeah. uh, earlier the 2019 year of Coleman, Mostert, and Breida. They combined for 1,930 yards on 400 carries. <laughs> now, you're not going to ask you know, Jordan Mason to carry it 400 times give and go him, for 1,900. But you give him 330? You give him 280, and then you spread 150 among Garendo okay. and you know whoever else you want to elevate up. 28 carries last time? Yeah. Is that right? So yeah, times 20, 16. 28 times... Well, 28 times uh, 17. 17. Yeah, yeah 28 that's times about 450. 17. Yeah, 476. That seems like a lot. I'll take the under. <laughs> it feels like it might be a record. <laughs> but this three headed monster uh, was 397 carries for more than 1,900 yards. So they were able to run the ball effectively and go to the Super Bowl, by the way, with Coleman, Mostert, Breida, and just a tiny sprinkle of Jeff Wilson. These are not household names. No, no, but uh, but but boy, they were successful and all still bouncing around too. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seventy is the number. Are the Niners still Super Bowl favorites if CMC hits IR? And what do you expect the record to be after Week Five if that's the case? Want to know now? Then it's at Minnesota. Then it's at the Rams. Then it's home to the Patriots and home to the Cardinals before he'd be eligible if the Niners choose to do that. Marvin and Livermore is next up on Weathered and Dibs. Hi, Marvin. Thank you for the call. Hey, uh, how you guys doing? Good show. I just have a different viewpoint. I do think the Niners are the favorites out of the NFC after one game. But uh, three things that I wanted to say. One is who gets the blame or credit uh, as a uh, or as a uh, CMC's agent that good that he hit a serious injury from them so far and got had him become the highest paid running back. And then two, on Mason, brand new, he's one fumble or two fumbles away from <laughs> not starting, so what are the Niners going to do? And then three, I'm a lifelong Bronco fan, mm. and all those running backs you mentioned did great, but we only won the Super Bowl when we got a Hall of Fame running back, TD. So the 1,900 yards those guys did, they didn't win. And the name of the game for the Niners right now, their window is to win. So I'm not sure running back by committee will win a Super Bowl. Yeah, I don't, Marvin, this is an interesting call. And I, I, I don't love uh, running back by committee either in this particular scenario. A uh, little bit of a chicken or the egg comment. I don't want to take anything away from uh, Terrell Davis. I will say if he ended up on a different team, I don't know that he would have gotten a gold jacket. So when you say they didn't win until they got TD, that's true. But was TD, I mean, we do this to Purdy, right? So was TD a product of the system? No doubt. To a degree. And he had John Elway as a quarterback, even though I know he wasn't as devastating in that portion of his career. But anyway, let's let, just sort of bringing it back to the 49ers. The first thing he brought up I would love to address, the idea of the agent for Christian McCaffrey and Christian himself sort of like insinuating that they pulled the wool over the 49ers' eyes in becoming the highest-paid running back. A, he was already the highest-paid running back in the game. He just got a little bit more. And B, should the 49ers have known that this was going to linger or flare back up? I don't know if you can ask that of teams. And See, even if they did know that that was a risk, I, I think you still do it. I think you still do it. You know, it's akin to me um, on a much smaller scale to what the Warriors did when they showed up to Clay Thompson's hotel room with a max extension. It's like the, the, the expectation is that Christian's going to be a part of this for a number of more years and, and, and is going to get back healthy. If they end up wrong, it won't be the first time. You know, D Ford, like sometimes things happen and you're just like, yeah. well, they got the Niners hurt, used but... to always draft guys with torn ACLs. Yeah. <laughs> if you remember Marcus Lattimore and uh, uh, Contavious Street, I believe was another guy who had an ACL. But 
They didn't have the wool Joe Williams. over their eyes. Thank you. Yeah, Joe, who oh, never actually never played an NFL snap. Never played. Randy said that like yeah, he was still and, uh, mad about it. That guy yes. heard, uh, heard the wide receiver. Was it Jalen Hurd? Yes. Who yes. had the bad back, and he never played either. Preseason so. legend, though. Thank you. Yeah. And I don't believe that they pulled the wool over the Niners' eyes. They knew full well where he was medically, and they chose to sign him and give him guaranteed money anyway because he's that important.